Hello once again. You're welcome along to another video. Fall to road, Morris Ganoch. Um, further to quite a few requests today, I'm going to be tying the upside down olive dun, and it's a very um, effective fly. Not that difficult to tie. So let's get to it. Right, the upside down olive dun. Um, you can tie it on a variety of sizes, but probably the most useful size is either uh, 16, 14. I'm going to try and tie it here on a 16. And um, the first thing to do is to put the hook in the vise upside down, if you like. And start off, I'm using black tine silk, uni thread 8 -0. Start off here just behind the eye. And we're going to place our wing roughly a third of the way along the hook shank. Now for the wing, um, you can use a variety of different materials. Um, what I use is Antron in various different colours. Um, I'll probably use the one that I use most of the time, which is this Antron yarn, and it's um, an olive color. It's called PMD Shuck on here. Um, that's a pale morning done, I think, which is um, sort of a general sort of olive color. Right. the wing just like that. And we come here in front of it with a few tight wraps that will make it stand vertically. And I'm just going to shorten it up here and make life easier for myself. So now when you have your wing tied in you can put your hook back in its normal orientation and we'll continue back along the hook and around the bend. Now what I make the tail from is a tail and the body are both made from pheasant tail. I'm just going to cut some out here. I use about four or five fibers. Um, I think there's four there, yeah. So the pheasant tail has a natural curvature, which we're going to employ to bring the tail that direction over the hook. And the tail is approximately, or maybe a little longer than the body. There we are. Now, the next thing is this color wire. Now, the fly works very well with this color wire, but you can also use um, yellow, gold, or whatever color takes your fancy and we tie that in starting here and now we go back to our pheasant tail again and again I find four to be ideal if you use four fibers um, gives you the right um, diameter of body. You want it to be too thick and heavy. You just want it to be nice and slim like natural fly. So now we use a pheasant tail to create the body. that off. 
I'm just there behind the wing. And then we'll trim out the waist. Okay, now the wire rib in the direction opposite the pheasant tail in open turns. Gradually widening as you go forward, just a very slightly, a slight increase on each turn. And again, we tie in the wire. And I'm trying to find, oh, there it is. Trim off the waist. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a half hitch just here. Just a little knot just to make sure that nothing escapes. So now I'm going to turn the, the hook back up. And this is where you have to be careful with your tails that you don't trap them. So what I do is I pull them well down out of the way and catch the hook in in that orientation like that. Now what we want to do is we want to create the um, the rest of the fly with the hackle and the hackle I'm using here is a Cree. These are genetic hackles. It will be necessary to have genetic hackles because if they're not genetic hackles you won't have enough fibres per inch so to speak to get the right effect. So I'm tying that in right there. now we can add a little dubbing at the front if we want. Um, I'm going to use um, generally the, the thorax on a fly is darker than the rest of his body so I'm just going to put in a bit of black. So just a bit of black dubbing. sides of the wing. Head up to the front here. Now I'm going to put on the hackle in front and behind and we're going to make it very very bushy. We're going to put on a lot of turns which you wouldn't normally do with genetic hackles because it's not necessary for flotation's sake. But for this fly, you need to put on a lot of turns. So you get a very bushy effect like that. Trim off the rest of the hackle there. Now we get our whip finish on it. Four turn whip finish and another just for security. Now the next thing to do here is to trim all the hackle on what you'd normally leave on the fly. a visit from my granddaughter there who just brought me a little bit of pink wool or <laughs> wherever she got it from from some teddy bear or something but it may be of some use at some point now what I'm gonna do is pull everything up here vertically like this and anything that really protrudes down that way I'm just going to trim it off And 
that is essentially it just for one more little thing to do here now whoop, just dropped it on the floor so I'm just going to examine the fly here now and again just trim out any that are sticking below the horizontal and that's the um, shape of the fly that's what it'll look like to your potential victims the trout and um, you can leave the tail just as is with the four fibers or you can separate them out into and uh, just put take out two of them and leave two if you want to be that particular about it not really necessary and um, just leave the hook like that and that's the um, upside down olive done and a mighty good fly it is now although you may get a lot of takes on it there is one small hitch with this fly you won't get as many hookups with this fly as you will with a fly tied in the conventional manner because the hackle and the wing mask the hook to a degree now you will get hookups but not as many as if you fished uh, as if you'd fished it conventionally but it can save the day at times particularly on very picky and choosy trout so give it a try and uh, once again thanks very much for watching and good evening